Hey everybody, this is Jeff here with Matthew Enderly of the Embroidery Nerd. Um, Matt's got his glasses and his hat today. I should probably get some glasses. Maybe. Yeah, you got rid of all yours. Yeah, I know. I sent them to other people. Let me point my finger at you. Although you do get a pretty good reflection off of those going into the uh, into the screen. Yeah, you can kind of read my top secret source code. Uh oh, top super top secret. I mean, it took you forever to get me one of these lovely hats. If I ever remember which side the embroidery is on, <laughs> it's on the opposite side than what the camera shows. Mine is on the left side, and my camera shows me it's on the right. It messes me up a little bit. Um, we have Linda in the comments. Hey, how are you all doing? We're doing pretty well today. Uh, hopefully, you're doing well too. Just on um, Monday. Yep, we have Frank, who, the man who never sleeps. Actually, Frank, I was a little worried because we came out about an hour early um, because, as you noticed, Justin's not here. He, Yep, waiting on our mentor. So he is prepping for his webinar that he's going to be doing this weekend. Um, exciting stuff. But That'll be good. Today, Matt actually has a project that we're going to go over with him. Look at his scared face. Oh, boy. I don't know. What, what is this project? <laughs> the patch. Wait a oh, minute. Yeah. He's getting there. My, my wee little brain can't remember um, very well. Yep. Okay, so let me throw some windows around on my computer, find where Wilcom even is. It is on your massive monitor. Well, just because you said that, I'll move it to the other one so you're wrong. Okay. Um, let's see. Share, share screen. Let's see, which monitor is this? That's the one I want. Well, bam. Even look at that. There's no ultimate special edition up in the banner. <laughs> hey, okay. I have that patch sitting right here yeah. actually, from Matt. Um, you think uh, I should make it a little bit less wide so we can make it full screen or do we not want to? Oh, uh, that's up to you. We have Frank saying, yes, that was a problem last week. It was on at 2 a.m. And we have Carrie Smith. Hello. Yeah. Uh, apparently in, is it Arizona or New Mexico? I can't remember. Where's Justin at? Uh, well, our villa is going to be in uh, Arizona, so that's where he's at. So, in the state that Justin's in, they don't have daylight savings time. So, we all moved and he didn't. Yeah. Yep. Well, it only takes one to screw the rest over. <laughs> used to that. Anyone who's been in the military is used to that. But, um, uh, anyways, without further ado, uh, this is the lovely patch we we're going to be making. If you couldn't tell, I was kind of uh, had this one up to someone's notifications are on. Uh, did you just shush me? You weren't supposed to point it out. No. Oh. Well, everyone heard it. But yeah, so this is the, the patch that I need to make. Um, sure, you can go ahead and you can buy this patch from an, another company already, a very popular. Uh, military company, but um, they want you to buy a hundred, I believe, or fifty at a time, or something like that. So the person wants two, so I'm going to go ahead and help them out. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do, since uh, we didn't have anyone submit any uh, digitizing 911 things. Yep, so that would be correct. If you'd oh, rather see that, put that up. instead of us fumbling around with the design and talking for an hour answering questions just submit any any design that you have an issue with and we'll work on it together um yeah so here we go let's get started let's see what i actually did copy it in sweet so this is significantly bigger than what we want we want the design to be three inches oh i thought we were going three and a half nope it's three now I have to resize it in my software too. Well, good job. Nope. According to the Air Force instructions, it's supposed to be three inches tall. Oh yeah, we better follow those. They're kind of sticklers with their regulations. Yeah. 
So if I actually, I mean, I could actually bring it over. Yeah, this is the actual regulations tells you what all the colors are and like what they mean. And um, yeah, super boring stuff, but um, tells you like what different fonts it has to be and stuff like that, where, how, yeah, no one really cares. <laughs> Until they do, and then it's a problem. Yeah. Until you have to, you don't care. You don't want to care. So because I mainly do uh, patches, yep. I can kind of cheat, and I can just come here, and I can just uh, steal the, the border and the background. <laughs> and where to go? <laughs> Way over there. <laughs> Like something's not right here. Okay, here we go. Much better. So, question: Are you doing this in the OP OCP colors, or are you going to do it in the regular colors? I am doing it in the regular colors. Um, the uh, AFRL they already have OCP ones. Uh, there's only like one flyer there, so they want the the colored ones so they can wear the green flight suit. Um, so they need the color ones. So instead of them paying. Uh, buttload of money to get 100 when they only want to. That's what I'm here for. I'm And I'm here for the hilarious commentary. Well, we always need that. Um, so yeah, I know that the regulations say that it has to be... I don't know why I have this stitch in here. I don't think that one's even necessary. So it has to be yellow border. It has to be a white background with a field of blue. That is pretty much every single um, patch. It requires these three colors, which is whatever. It's the military. Um, yeah. All right, so we have a comment from Frank. He says, Matt, your screen is bigger enough. Okay, well, I was looking at getting a few more of these and just doing like a massive wall, but... I, you can I, install that in my house. I totally let you. <laughs> Oh, well, we got to get your basement studio set up first. Yeah. We're waiting okay. on the floor. So it's been a long time since I digitized with someone watching me. Um, <laughs> you know, that I don't typically follow a, a proper plans. I just kind of wing it and go. Um, Winging it and going is, is a plan. It is. I guess it is, depending on how you look at it. Um. So I'm trying to ignore my dog who is breathing on me and whining that he's not getting fed. So we're going to go ahead. Um, I'm going to lock the background. Uh, that way I don't move it around because that just really annoys me. Um, I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to hide the, no, I'm not going to hide it. I will hide the blue, not the other stuff. Uh, one thing I don't like about Wilcom is that you can't just hide it right here. You actually have to go over here. Uh-oh. That was something I always did in Hatch. Is there not a keyboard shortcut? Uh, I don't think so. No. Oh. Because it would be like Control-H, but that doesn't do that. And Shift-H does like remove all of your angles and then add them or something. Yeah, I think Control-H is adding your angles. And Shift yeah. is removing I mean, I guess I could technically click it and see, but yeah, that doesn't do anything. Shift H is the angles, but yep. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and do this yellow part. I kind of like to work from the background um, coming to the foreground. Just trying to think of big technical words. Do a lot of watching Eric talk, and he uses all the big words like serifs. And, and patches. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not at that level yet, so I'm just trying to think of uh, some words that make me sound smarter. But we all know I came from Wisconsin, so. Um, <laughs> so I am going to go ahead and try to stop self-deprecating myself, and we're going to go to digitize close shape. So Jeff probably has a different way of doing this. Um, I'm very used to how hatches ran. Um, Sorry, my wife is tutoring someone and just started laughing. Um, 
So in Hatch, there's only like a open fill, closed fill, and then there is a column. So it's these three tools. In Wilcom, there's columns and all these other different ones. So I don't know if Jeff would, if you would do something different um, to do this section right here, or if you just do a closed shape, like what I'm going to be doing. But I guess I'll just start clicking ahead and um, let you yell at me if you would do it differently. Well, I just use the, uh, what is it they call it? A complex fill. Oh, yeah, I don't know which tool that is. I thought you had all the names on there so you could read them. Yeah, but I wanted to feel like a big boy, so. <laughs> and I kind of regret it. F3, hotkeys. F3, you alt F3? No, just F3. Okay, that I is the three. complex fill. Excuse me, F3. Um, oh, it is that one. Interesting. See, I learned something, but I'm going to ignore yeah. that, and I'm not going to use it. <laughs> Frank right. says you need to work from far to near. Yes. So background to foreground, I think. Uh, that's kind of how I do uh, vector design, too. Um, I don't think I have it. Uh, I mean, my vectors are definitely nothing exciting or high quality, I would say, compared to someone who professionally does vectors. But um, let's see. Getting back on topic, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this. So Frank, I'm, I'm not supposed to forget you're winging it. Yes, winging. I'm going to say for airplane. Yep. No, it's a spear tip. I'm not quite sure. And we're just going to go ahead and do this. Click this puppy, drag him up there. I think that will work. What are you doing? Well, bam. Oh. Did you not I know that? over reference line. Yeah, you move this little center thing. And yeah. Then, uh, whenever you rotate it, that becomes your center point. Ha, huh, did I teach you something? No. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to reshape this a little bit. Um, just because they are different. So uh, normally you wouldn't do it like this uh, with two different fills or whatever, I guess. Normally, yeah. I would have just did a tatami fill the entire thing. Um, but there is a patch that I am also referencing on my other screen, which uh, let me bring it up. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at. So I'm supposed to mimic exactly what they're doing. But so this one looks more like it has a satin fill. That's why I'm doing it that way. Because that's what yes, I like it. So, YOLO, and if it don't work, I can just switch it over. Yep. Well, what was that? You turned it into an outline. Okay, well. Twice. What is going on? Whatever. <laughs> we'll just do this one. Okay. Sweet, beautiful. All right, so if I make that yellow, um, it looks pretty good. And then I'm going to use my bracket keys on the keyboard, or maybe not. Never mind, that's Adobe only. Um, OK, so that's behind. Sweet. All done. Good to go. I'm switching to sublimated, so I don't have to digitize any further. Um, <laughs> unfortunately not. Full field, sublimate. Um, so another thing is now it's which color do I go to? So I have two different grays. Um, if I bring, if I didn't delete or close it, they kind of, it looks kind of like they blended it in here a little bit, um, which is kind of a, a neat idea. So I'm probably going to end up stealing that. Um, Stars, I hate doing stars, um, especially this style. This looks like the uh, 
the Candlewick knot with just uh, some run lines going out. If, uh, gotcha. Yeah. In uh, well Palm, it's called a, there's actually a button for it, a star. Yeah, but I don't remember how to use that one. Star. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that looks right. And then you just increase your density. And if I turn it upside down like this, <laughs> there's a hidden uh, satanic. <laughs> okay. Yeah. As we get canceled from Goop, everything freezes. Oh yeah, I'm. I learned my lesson. I don't talk bad about Google anymore. <laughs> oh, we have Letty in the comments. Hey, Letty, how's it going? This is going to be fun. Okay, so there we go. Um, obviously, I would have done the lines beforehand. Uh, we were just playing with that. Um, my brain power doesn't seem to be all that high right now, but um. So I'm gonna do this. Eric says we're fine unless we involve the Nike logo. <laughs> I would not want to find that out the hard way. You know, I see a lot of Nike stuff on um, Etsy. So I think it's fine, right? If they can do it, we can do it. <laughs> yeah, I would not recommend that. And that is my legal advice. I would not recommend it. <laughs> uh, that is not what I want. Whoa. Are you going to rotate it around the point? Yeah, I'll probably just do that again. You know, there's this handy little element called auto arrangements. Let's see. Where I have it. Um, you have auto arrangements? I thought so. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we have a lady that says, great guys, Nike swoosh, there it was. And I'm not going to quote anybody on this comment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they can always delete it and you just come back with another one, so. I've noticed quite a few Etsy design uh, sites tend to disappear and are mostly frequently new. Um, we have Trish here. Good morning from Australia. Good morning. Or evening. I mean, it's evening here, so. Time time is just confusing. We should just all use Zulu time. Just one whatever. <laughs> one whatever. One reference. That is the unit, just whatever. Whatever. Start at three and go to 24. Did you find your auto arrangements yet? I, I don't know where it is. <laughs> Did you go to like window and toolbars and then... Uh, oh, that's probably right. I feel like you might not have digitized for a while. I really haven't. Well, you know, I've took a, a tactical pause and then... Um, I was really busy at work for a while. Yeah, what were you doing? Uh, it's just a bunch of stuff. Where did you <laughs> even go? Oh. This is pretty painful. <laughs> that ain't it. That can't be it. I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying it. it. It's nice to kind of have the night off once <laughs> and just sit back and enjoy it. So. Uh. I'm pretty sure okay. Justin's doing the same thing, maybe. Unless if, probably not. We're going to do large icons as well. <laughs> so that you can really see. Oh, it's thinking. Whoa, God, I definitely can find it now, I'm sure. <laughs> Actually, that makes it hard. <laughs> yeah, I don't even see the buttons on your screen. Yeah, there's uh, too many now. And I don't even have all of the elements selected. Now, where was that? Oh, here we go. <laughs> So this is the nice thing about having an ultra wide monitor is I can have it 
uh, all the tools like this. So this is how I started when I transitioned into Wilcom. Um, obviously, I it was a lot uh, faster a couple weeks ago, but you know, I, <laughs> I still can't. What does it look like? Where's uh, yours? Bring up yours. Show me where it is, because there is something going on here. And I definitely clicked it. Oh, never mind. I clicked auto digitizing tools. So I have it docked down here on the bottom and it's these tools down here. So if I come in here and I do a quarter of what Matt did. Yeah, I found it. Okay, we're gonna get rid of these. Uh... And then I can go ahead and select it and I can hit the auto arrange tools and we have four. And then it's just a matter of lining up where they all go. That's not fair. What do you mean it's not fair? It doesn't look quite right on my screen. This There's isn't the right on. toolbar either. What is going on? Arrange tools? Arrange tools? Bling, mirror merge, stitch, styles, travel, auto, applique, whole, manual. What's manual? There we go. Problem Bang. solved. I'm going to get this. Three shot <laughs> What's that? That's a, this other one. Yeah, that ain't it. Are you sure you have it? You just saw me pull it up in the, the thinger. <laughs> I just showed my hasp number to everyone, so it's definitely not under that one. Hmm. Edit tools, maybe. Nope. Yeah, but you have to have the element first. Yeah, I have it. And weird. Stitch, not styles, yeah. not travel, not zoom. What does yours look like? For uh... it, Oh, you want to look at my thing? Technical term, the thing, or yeah, that's where we're yeah. at right now. There you go, Matt. I have color, docker, fill stitch types, graphic di digitizing, legacy features, mirror merge, mode, outline stitch types, prompt bar, property bar, standard, status, stitch effects, tools, traditional digitizing, transform, view, and edit tools. That's what I have up. Well, I don't know. Maybe I got to consult technical support. What are you doing? Dog is being weird. Anyways, um, yeah. So this is a uh, very educational um, segment of watch Matt get flustered to the point where he just says "screw it" and does this manually. I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying it. And then, of course, I didn't duplicate it. Okay, so now I got that. Now I can just do duplicate. Well, bam, that didn't do it. But we'll just do this. Well, bam, that was way more painful than what it should have been. I'm sorry. Hey, let's bring your screen back up. Obviously, I did not learn anything from your class because I was not paying attention, I guess. Uh, now there's so many toolbars on here, I don't know where anything is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, so we've got Frank says Zulu time is one hour ahead of wherever you are. Letty says technical term the thinger, and Eric says this may be why I just rotate in place or do it manually. Yep. Hmm. I refuse to be defeated. but I was not defeated. That is what matters. Okay, so we got this now. I'm gonna go ahead and make that yellow uh, for a sense of accomplishment. Um, again, like I said, I'm not a professional. This is why I don't get paid to digitize for people and I don't accept payment. 
Um, so I already lost my train of thought. Um, yeah. So we did the knot. Now we need to do, if you're going background to foreground, you're probably going to do the blue next, right? Yeah, well, the blue would mainly, uh, so I already have it. It's just hidden, but it would pretty much be cutting it out. Um, and the way I've been doing that is I have my entire design done, and then I merge everything together in a separate tab, and then I just do remove offset or remove uh, overlaps or something like that. One of these lovely guys over. The, that one button over there. Yeah, the union tools or whatever. That's how I do it. Otherwise, you have to come in, and then I would basically just use the knife tool and do it that way. But the overlap puts the proper ish um, overlap that you need. At least that's from what I've seen. But you're much more pro than I am. No, I'm learning. Um, but stars. Um, so there is a shape tool, which, yes, you can use. Um, but I'm pretty sure I would get yelled at for using it. Like, I like this one a lot. It didn't even turn out. I'm so disappointed. I mean, then again, it is only a 0.1 inch tall Christmas tree. But <laughs> <laughs> anyways, to get back on track. So we're going to go ahead and. Now I got to throw you off. So we have Eric says, I've seen your good work. Getting the little workspace flustered is nothing. Your work says you've learned plenty. Uh, Frank says, all the gear and no idea. That's how I feel 99% of the time. Yep. And Eric, though I feel that stubborn, stubbornness, I would be resetting my workspace and replacing everything too. And to move on. So we're going to go ahead and try this. I guess I didn't do that properly. So there's an ugly line right here. I could post in um, a Facebook group asking how to get rid of that. Um, and then I'll answer it myself. You just move to start and end. So if you didn't know that, that's exactly what's going on there. There's this ugly black line. So I just moved it down here and it went away. There you go, I taught something. And then there's one there yet because that's the way it was. Um, let's see, and I gotta get out of the edit view. Move him to the center there. And of course this isn't symmetrical, but it doesn't matter. Because only myself and you know about that. Just gonna go ah, and then I select the wrong one. Bob Saget. And then we'll go ahead and do that one too. I'm all about being lazy, even if it means that I have to do more work as a result of my laziness. So that is how I do it. Um, unless Jeff has a different method you're muted or your microphone died matt you're not allowed to mute me i didn't mute you everyone <laughs> saw me working and clicking away and getting flustered you think i have enough brain power to multitask and barely <laughs> drink water and think at the same time like goldfish you're muted again and it wasn't me again Nope, I think your microphone died. <laughs> yeah, so before the stream, uh, Jeff here joined in, and it sounded like a screaming narwhal in heat. Um, and I'm like, hey, your microphone is messed up, and he wouldn't fix it. Um, so here's a demonstration of what it sounded like. Yeah. Yeah. It sounded just like that. Um, just like that. Exactly. I mean, that was verbatim. That was a direct recording of it. 
All right, so I put up my screen. I'd use the column B, um, and I'd do my right side. I'd come down to probably about there. Hit enter here, here, and here. Make sure that it's a satin. Auto arrangements. And right there, it's going to ask me if I want to merge my overlapping objects. I don't. And there we go. Yeah, that, I mean, to be honest and not just saying it, like, that's how I normally would do it. But I don't know where the auto arrangement thing is. Like, I literally have no idea. And you saw me get flustered by it. There's a wreath button on my screen, but um, I don't know. <laughs> if I had hatch open, which I could open it, I still own it. Um, yeah, that's my excuse. But yeah, now I'm just going to duplicate it going down straight and just holding control. I mean, I guess, it, again, auto arrangements would be nice because then I can just set the distance or um, uh, actually there is a button right there. Let's see. Yeah, you have auto arrangements down there on the bottom. That one. Hmm. Now move your mouse over the screen. Oh, I need to increase this up to what four, five, four, Aha, I, five. Oh, it's kind of misleading because it shows me that, and I thought I was doing another one, but I guess it isn't green. Um, so let's see. If I hold Control, it'll lock it into the major axis that I am on. Oh, where is my? Although I can't see when I'm. Well, that's not annoying at all. Whatever. Yellow. No, I do not want to merge. Okay. Yeah. By the way, no wise man has ever said yellow. So don't actually follow that principle. Oh, Jeff, you're awfully quiet. And I keep thinking your mic is dying. I muted myself. Oh, well. Okay, so there we go. All done, again. Uh, so, unfortunately not. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, one thing to mention, like, I never would use this view ever until I saw, I think, you and Justin doing a video. And, like, I always thought that this was kind of annoying because you can't really see where anything is. And then after I started using it, I was like, man, I wish I would have been using this like two years ago. Because this is how I digitize like 90% of the time. Because if it looks good on the screen, it'll come out good. At least that's what I always thought. So um, obviously that is not the case. So I'm going to go ahead and not bring up uh, Sublime Text. We're going to scroll down. And we're going to zoom out a little bit. So they have three individual satins here, it looks like. Or it could just be one long one. Um, but that's like a two and a half to three millimeter satin, I think. So it's probably two separate satins, I would guess. It looks like it's auto split. Like auto splitting in the center right here? Yeah, or whatever you're not. I'm going to get two really narrow satins going up here. So, yeah, it's probably do gray first and white over it. That's what I'd do. Good thinking, because that's exactly what I was going to do, too. So, I don't know what any of these other buttons do. I guess I will be researching them in the future. Um, so, I'm just going to go ahead and start going around this seam. Um, I'm not going to go all the way down here. Because uh, there's no point. It's going to be covered up anyways. And... I guess I should have looked at what my... Um, 
brain fart, processing. Uh, I got nothing. Let me just got go back nothing. over and I'll think of. Oh, so there is no black lines. Well, so that means I do got to overlap it a little bit more. Okay. Well, not a big problem. Usually when I do digitizing too, I do end up having to do a sample and then fix it after the fact. Uh, so like a revision or two, and I'm fine with that. Um, obviously this looks really ugly, but I don't care because I'm fortunately putting a white satin over it. Um, I, I did hear that some machines can do like 0.8 satins and like an inch long satin too but not mine yeah i wouldn't uh, recommend it yeah oh uh one thing that will make this look a lot better is if i actually do colors so let's go over here we're going to change this get rid of my custom thread chart um which by the way if you're looking for thread charts i th think on the website we have a bunch of thread charts um, available that you can download and import. I don't know if we transferred that over since we had to redo the site because someone broke it. Um, actually, two people broke it. But <laughs> I was going to say, wait a minute. <laughs> it wasn't just me. It was mostly me, but it wasn't just me. Yeah, I, I know. I did a as equal, if not greater. But actually, I was able to fix mine. When whatever you did, there was no coming back from that one. I essentially did what you did, just better. Yeah, you you done did good. Um, I want a gray. I guess I could probably just type in gray. Um, I'm not like actually. I feel like maybe you should be like super duper color matching these to the exact picture. I mean, I could, um, but I've never figured out how to properly do it in Wilcom. Like I've done it before, but you're like, oh, you just use the eyedropper tool and it works. And it's like, every time I click it, it doesn't do it. I mean, there's always websites that are say, if only there was an app for that. Um, that means I got to download the image. Download complete image. Oh, I should probably click browse first. Let's see. What is going on? <laughs> uh, downloads. Okay, so here we go. Um, Ninety-six percent. That's pretty dang close. We'll go with that puppy. Oh, I guess I do. We'll come kind of open here. Um, okay. Did I add? Yeah, I did. So we'll do that guy. All right. We have a question here. I'm gonna go pull up some comments because we got uh, sidetracked. Well, you did. Um, you got apparently it. I have a lot of echoes. That's, you know, the nature of my setup. Apparently I, I think I need new stuff. Don't tell my wife. Um, Ella says, wow, this is cool. Uh, Suzanne says I don't have any echoes. So internet, uh, Frank, how will you keep both satin stitches from pulling away from each other? Well, that is a good question. Um, I like to call it just, uh, magic. Um, I'm obviously gonna have to change this. Uh, when I did this shape, I thought I was doing a black outline. Um, this is the artwork that the person that wants the patches sent me. Um, and then I found the other artwork. So I'm mimicking what the other. But so I actually I have an answer for that. Yeah, I know. I, I did a politician's answer. Um, huh. I have a real answer. That's politician's answer. So really when it comes down to it when you're laying two satins right next to each other it depends on how you want them to butt up if you want them to butt up exactly 
and there to be no real separation between them, um, you're going to have to set underlay a little bit closer. So when I do intersecting satins like that, what I like to do is I like to do a run stitch first that goes underneath that sets, defines the edge for both satins. And then I throw stitches from each satin on the opposite side of that. So they end up locking on the opposite side of that stitch, which stops them from pulling apart. I concur. That's my long story short answer. Um, and Suzanne says, I am used to old school and creating a colorway with the Wilcom basic colors. I do that a lot too, and then just kind of kick it in later. And now I'll shut up, Matt. Good. <laughs> just kidding. All right, so I'm just trying to make this not uh, bring it back to what it's supposed to be. Maybe I should just bring up the actual design. Where did that one go? So are you going to add in a uh, black this outline is, then? This is what I'm doing. I'm going to match this. Um, I'm ignoring what they want or what they sent because I know them. Um, they just Googled the picture and found the first one they wanted. Um, I know they want it to look like all their other patches that they already have. So um, that looks pretty good. Good enough for government work. So <laughs> got a little bit of a ugly stitch there. I don't, I haven't actually tried to see if that stitch would be showing there, um, but I can probably just bring this in. Yeah, I already got rid of it. So there we go. Um, so again, my yellow is going to be behind all of this, so, uh, I can't just run a stitch over to that guy, but I could kind of hide it up here. It's pretty narrow. So that's probably what I'm going to do. So I'll just do shift N and then bring it in just so that I have it there and I can figure out where I want it. Did it even do anything? I did. It's just hidden because it must be the exact same color as the yeah nice found the thread color that matches wilcom's color whatever um i gotta stop getting myself sidetracked it just reminds me of the movie up and then there's oh, always kevin. a squirrel yeah oh kevin was the the bird it's dog it's the dog yeah Yep, I know. So if I go back to this, that was a satin. Um, I swear it looks like they blended it a little bit here. It could just be the lighting, but. All right, we'll see how wide this is. We'll switch it over to the non-freedom units. 10, yeah, that's a little a little far. Um, let's see. Jiffy probably has a good idea on how to get rid of this without it being 10. Because if I do height, if I do shadow it, if I can get this lower, I don't really have to worry about it. But I'm zooming in and looking at your uh, screen, and I'm trying to figure out what you need me to do. Oh, I was just trying to think of a way to get rid of the, the split in the satin without, because obviously if I do this, I can do that. Mm -hmm. but it's, oops, that's not what I wanted. But if you but look at their picture, it's auto, it's got a split in it. An auto Is split that an it. actual split though? Yeah, it's an auto split. Length limit satin. Because you can see that it kicks in right there when it starts getting really wide. Because, right, I mean, to me, it looks like that's the same color as what wraps around here, which is a different color. At least I think, unless if it is. No, it's definitely it an auto color? split in there. Because hmm. it's definitely two colors on the vector. Yeah, they could just be adding dimension with thread. Well, I mean, in that case, I can just do one gray color. I mean, I have like 15 different shades of gray, not 15, yeah. but yellow. <laughs> it's the most I've ever said yellow. 
should probably stop. Okay, uh, and of course I hit the letter A again, which is the bane of my existence in the software. <laughs> and then there's this going at this lovely angle right through here. And then white, it looks like white is going over it, because white would be a highlight. So again, I did this really long line here, and I bring him down. So I'll do this again. Well, you're missing the satin on top of the left one. Over here? Or which, for which color? Uh, I guess the left peel turn up thing. Right here? No, if you go up a little bit. Oop, oh, oop, so you mean oop. on the right. So. This? You're going to make me hit enter, and then I'm going to lose all my progress. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what I just did is I'm doing this one, then my run, and then this guy. This one, that'll bring me back up here, and then I can hop over just to avoid the trim, and then come into this one, and then I'll do this shape. Gotcha. Unless someone else has a different plan. Uh, you're driving this ship, Captain. Oh, boy. I guess in the military, they probably say you're flying this plane. Well, if I am told that, that's not a good thing. <laughs> I, I would know. totally tell you that. Not the pilot. That's way too much work for what I want to do. So I probably don't even need to do that that way, but I can add a little bit of contouring. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. One of these guys I can do it on. It's not underlay. Not that one. Are you dreaming? Man, I need to... Probably should... It's definitely not that button. Um, probably should have did a little bit of digitizing before hop right back in. But, um... Hmm... It's not special. It's not outlined. It's not that one. I Lenny says you're that. the one driving the bus. Yeah, well, we're all about to go off a cliff if I'm driving. <laughs> or am I thinking it was Sat or uh, Tatami? Whatever. We're going to ignore that. All right, so okay. um, bring this guy back out here. Where is my start? Throw my start in so there's no ugly trim. I have 18 trims. I'm going to have to do some work. I don't know where they are, but there's definitely not 18 trims on this design. Um, yeah. There's also another nice thing about the ultra wide is I can have all this extra information that no one else really cares. But I can, this is like my progress report um, telling me how good of a job I'm doing. Obviously, I always have an A heart. It's never yep. an A plus, but I've never gotten an A plus in my entire thirteen years of schooling, so I'm used to that, I guess. But okay, so back to what we actually think you care about. <laughs> uh, if I can figure out the buttons, here we go. So now I'm going to switch over to white, and we are going to do the highlights. Okay. Bam. I should probably overlap this a little bit. Uh, I'll start down here where I can actually see it.
Man, Matt, I don't know if we're going to be able to finish this tonight. Yeah, I know. I'm a little slow. Well, I mean, we spent the first how long looking for the whatever. But Is this not a fill? Oh, I did a stupid open. What a noob. Okay. Again, I'm only doing two patches, so it's not like I'm doing 100-something. So I'm not too worried. <laughs> Yet. Um, until they're like, oh, man, that turned out so great. We want 300, and then I'm going to die. Um, that okay. sounds like what actually happens. Yeah, it's probably what would. Let's see. Um, where is my bills? <laughs> mm -hmm. ah, we'll just go with 10. Beautiful. Um, so I got that one. And then this guy, and I still got to do that gray part yet. Gosh, this is like the most annoyed I have ever been with digitizing. <laughs> what am I auto jumping? Where did auto jump even come from? Magic. How did, that, how did that get into like its own? I'm so confused. Eric says, great thing about working digital is you can always edit. I feel for the old school punchers. Cut the tape here and we'll splice in the last 5,000 stitches. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I can imagine it's no more fun than like doing uh, old film editing where you have to cut the tape and like slice them together and bind it. Now, why am I getting this weird? How is it? It's not doing anything. Did you break it? I think so. Uh-oh. I mean, I'm at the point where I'm not, like, at a whole lot of cures right now. <laughs> So we have seven viewers right now. I'm actually kind of surprised. Well, we are popular. I mean, I like to tell myself that. Just waiting for my invitation from Hollywood to have my name put on the sidewalk. But Yeah, that's next week, right? Uh, I think so. Either that or like next year, whenever trade shows reopen. Oh, that'd be oh, really nice. Trade shows. I'd like to go to another one. And we can bombard Eric with questions. We have Suzanne saying, I'm still here. Thank you for sticking with it. And Eric saying, anyone who says they haven't gotten to that point is lying or not trying hard enough. <laughs> and Eric says, I'm here for it. Yep, I'm looking forward to trade show season. Hopefully, Dax next year. Kansas oh. City. And I've had somebody trying to convince me to go to um, Fort Worth. The I, I think it's ISS in Fort Worth. But that's this year, like later. Just went to scratch my head, and I scratched the hat. I disabled trim after... And then it made a trim. Okay. Like, see if next con connector, so I disable trim, and then it puts in a random jump. So we have Suzanne saying, I want to go to another trade show. I am definitely up for it. My The biggest lure of going to the trade show at DAX was the education. Um, it was neat to walk around the show, but I definitely went for the education. So I think once they start doing education back in person, I'm really going to want to start going to shows.
Oh, see, Letty's down. She's going to come to meet us in Kansas City at Dax next year. Well, I guess we're going to have to get a booth and a futon. I'll be there, and I'll probably have some of these guys with me. Maybe. We'll see how many of them I give away. So Eric says, Impressions Expo Fort Worth is a good one. Judge the Impressions Awards last year's show. That said, I may really have loved the Oktoberfest I stumbled onto. Got a little biased, among other things. Yeah. That would be really cool. I'd like to go see, um, to see an Impressions Expo. I've never been to one. And Eric also says that the decorators community always had a booth with two regular guys. Yep, I saw that last year. Um, and they podcasted live from Dax. I saw that too. Okay, is it just me or what is going on? Am I missing something? Uh, maybe. I literally don't know what is going on. You've got some really weird jumps going on there. <laughs> Tie in. <laughs> We're just going to change it to it. No, that doesn't do it either. So Eric says, live EMB nerd. Definitely going to go live from a show. Probably walking up and down the show floor. Um, don't think I can afford a booth yet. I hear they're pretty expensive. And Frank says, hopefully get to go to the big one in England in February. Frank, you should come to Impressions Expo in America. Yeah. Uh, the tickets is on Jeff. <laughs> yeah, we're overestimating how much money Jeff makes. Well, I don't know what is going on there, and that is getting really annoying. Um, weird. Weird. But, um, I mean, for the most part, that's it, other than the text is obviously not right. Um, but the text I'm probably going to end up doing manually. Yeah. Research. Eric says, oh, I bet the two regular guys booth might have some open time. That'd be really cool. Yeah, just mooch off of them. <laughs> Go hang out with them. Yeah, Let's be politically good. correct, Matt. Maybe someone would get you guest for a segment. That would let you guest for a segment. That would be really cool, too. So I'm roughly caught up to where you are, Matt. I'm yeah. this far. Yeah, so to be honest, I'm probably going to end up redoing this. <laughs> Just because my brain is not here right now. Um Eric says we might have an in, so we're definitely going to take you up on that. But, yeah, I don't know what is going on. There's something going on. Um, there is – I know you've been seeing a bunch of weird bugs with Wilcom every time it updates. So yep. I probably have to restart it or something. Yeah, we had a pretty odd one today where it broke a satin stitch – into two separate objects and put one of them at the end of the um, sewing order, except it still showed as one object and it showed up at the top of the file. So there was not a lot of fixing going on. Yeah. Um, Eric says live digitizing is rough. Did it, it shows. It's often why I stick to slides. Yeah, I could do slides. Um, I wonder if you have the default nearest connect on. It can cause all manner of nonsense i bet you you do closest join i i don't see anything different i mean this is normally what i have it's not any of these lovely guys tie off Turning it off doesn't even do anything. And I can't undo it. No, I literally can't undo it. Whoops. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right. But with that, Matt, we're pretty much up to the hour. So yeah. I'm going to let everybody go here. Um, 
couple of short announcements. Uh, looks like the Embroidery Nerd shirts have started shipping. So if you've ordered one, you should be looking for a shipping notification. Um, I got mine today. I was pretty excited. Those are coming from Justin. Um, Justin does have his uh, webinar coming up on Saturday. It's 3D Puff. We're going to go over digitizing theory. We're going to go over um, how to actually hoop a hat, sew a hat, and clean up the puff at the end. Uh, we also were able to talk with Tex Mac, uh, the distributor for Happy Embroidery Machines, and they're going to be giving us a 10% off um, discount code for those that are attending the live um, the live webinar. The words came out of my mouth. It just took me a little bit to get there. Parts too. Yep. yep. So um, we'll be emailing out more information on that, and we are definitely looking forward to it. That's why Justin's not here right now, as he's prepping for it. Um, I'm sure he's pretty excited slash really nervous. So um, with that, that's all the announcements I have. I don't know if you have anything I missed, Matt. Um, I guess we can bring up uh, mention. So you saw me use the lovely uh, uh, thread converter website. Uh, yep. If you haven't looked at it yet, I highly recommend looking at it. So we're going to pull it up here on the screen. Um, so you can access it through this lovely link right there. Um, the only reason I'm really plugging it right now is because I am working on a updated version. So if there's any, um, actually, I mean, this actually looks like the updated version already. So there you go. If you have any feature requests, now yeah, is the time. There we go. It wasn't supposed to be live yet. This was supposed to be under a beta, but apparently <laughs> I screwed that up. So yeah, here you go. This is the, the beta version, which is now open to the public. Um, yeah, so if you have any features you want requested, if you have thread charts you want added, I know I got to add the foo-foo, I think, or whatever. Yep. Um, yeah, and this is a beta, as you can tell by every time you click a color, it annoys you with the color because that, again, it wasn't supposed to be released yet. But uh, I changed how it shows you all of your different colors. It shows you the color you selected and the color it thinks it is. So. All right, I'm going to grab a couple of more comments here. Um, we have Frank saying, thanks, guys. Enjoyed it. Eric, round of applause for going live. Suzanne, thank you. Uh, Jonathan, first time watching your live stream, 10 out of 10. Thank you for joining us. Um, Letty, wahoo, excited to get the shirts in the upcoming seminar. I am also excited for that. I'm actually wearing my embroidery nerd shirt today. Um, we have Frank. I may have a little sleep now. Frank never sleeps. I don't believe it. And Suzanne, I'm getting my new covered utility trailer, trailer for my business on Saturday, and I don't know what time I'm getting delivery. That is awesome. So um, with the webinar, we will have it recorded, and we will make the link available uh, for people who want to watch the recording or who signed up for it and can't make it in time. Uh, the big difference between if you sign up now before we actually go live versus after we post the video recording for sale is the video recording will not have the 10% discount code from TextMag, um, and you won't be able to ask questions live. Um, so with that, we're really, really excited, and um, we're going to do some practicing tomorrow, and hopefully everything goes well. Uh, if you have a uh, suggestion or need a file looked at, you can go ahead and email that to uh, the embnerd at gmail.com, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that file, and if it's a good candidate, we'll bring it up on here we'll show how we would go ahead and correct the issues that we see in the file and how um, and how we would correct that. Uh, for those of you that do like to watch the education, tomorrow is Education Friday. I recommend catching the two regular guys show, the half with Eric Campbell that he does with Aaron Montgomery, as well as the take up. There's lots of good information in all three of those. Um, I know that I'm definitely looking forward to watching them and you should be as well. Uh, maybe we'll get lucky and we'll have um, somebody drop the links for those in the comments so that you guys can see that. If not, we always share them to the group. Um, yeah, Eric can plug his. Huh? Eric can plug his link. I'm sure he has it booked. <laughs> 
But uh, with that, if you can't make the webinar, we will have the recording available. Um, it might be a couple of days before I can get it back up. So um, we will have that up and available. If you can't make the webinar, uh, you can look for that link to purchase later. Again, you just won't be able to ask your questions live. So with that, um, oh, here we go. Head on over to ericcampbell.com. There's a tab at the top. So head on over there and click on the tab and catch all of the Education Friday. There's a lot of good stuff that's going to be on. Um, I look forward to it, and I have yet to miss a take-up episode. So I'm really, really proud of that record. I want to bring one comment back up. So Jonathan said he's a first-time watcher. Uh -huh. This is not an indication of what all of our lives are like. This is a very laid-back, um, have a beer or a Jameson. And I got a ton of them laying around. Um, I highly recommend that you look at some of our other uh, lives. They're a, a lot more informative. This one is watching me struggle. Um, it's not as bad as my uh, Chroma one, if you would say, Jeff. But I don't know. Your Chroma one has a lot of views on YouTube. And today we are actually streaming for the first time on both YouTube and oh, yeah. Facebook. So um, if you guys ever can't make the Facebook uh, live, but you want to watch it on YouTube, it is now available over there as well. Um, with that, uh, as long as Matt doesn't have anything else that we need to bring up. Nope. All right. We are still waiting on Justin Armena. Uh, I am Jeff Fuller. That's Matthew Enderly, uh, with the Embroidery Nerd. Thank you guys and have a wonderful evening.